y'all I'm trying to see what I'm doing hey y'all look we gotta gossip we gotta talk we have to talk we have to talk and I want to go over some audio okay there's some things going on there's some things happening I need y'all to hit the like button please and thank you tear that like button up put your like number in the chat Make sure that you're using your engagement button on the bottom right hand side, the circle with the emoji, send them bubbles up, let the people know we're here. We got talking to do. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Let me holler at who's in the building real quick. How y'all doing? Oh man, it's raining over here. It's been raining for like um going on two days. Going on two days. Monday evening is when it started. Um, I'm in Northwest Louisiana, close to the Texas border, not far from the Texas border. Um, it's been storming. Like my front yard looks like a marsh or a bowl. Like one step from a swamp, the rain will not stop. I mean, it's been dumping, dumping, dumping. Yesterday it stopped in between, but it came right, right back, real, real, real bad. And now today, back again. Okay, so y'all can imagine. Us, us ladies of a certain age <laughs> with that good old Arthur, you know, our friend Arthur, last name Writers. Um, yeah, it feel a little different today, you know, with all this water in the air, that rain. Y'all know how rain do you when you got that Arthur. So it's been doing me. It's been doing me. But let me greet everybody because we got to talk, honey. I ain't got no Arthur Writers in my mouth. So I'm talking. Hey, Magdalene, how you doing, sis? Thank you for being number one. Auntie Eva, thank you for being number three. Jackie Gaines says, happy hump day, y'all. What's up, girl? Thank you for being number three. The beautiful Bianca Edwards is on the porch and reminding y'all to please get your drinks, get your shoes off, and hit that like button. Very important. Super important. Barbara Parker is in the house all the way from the UK. What's up, sis? I love my girls from the UK. I love y'all. I love y'all. And Barbara, thank you for hitting like hitting the like button and being number two. Debbie Garcia is here. So Housewives Talk is legal. And child, ain't we got us some talking to do. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being number five. All right. Miss Sparkle is here, our resident Mary Kay lady. Hey, sis, how you doing? All right. Cream of wheat. What up, cream of wheat? How you doing? Oh, thank you for being number 10. Cream of wheat say, never mind what the mother channel's talking about. I'm ready for grown woman talk. Hey, y'all. I know that's right. Yes, this is the porch of the grown grown. We got a lot of grown folks with grown children. It's some ladies here with grown grandchildren, just in case y'all didn't know. You are welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Trey Game and Fish. Thank you for being number 10. I hope y'all having a good evening too. God's anointed daughter is number 12. Hello, lovely. Wani is in the house. What up, sis? Thank you for being number 11. Quiet storm. Our royal mama is here. Hey, how you feeling? Is the baby still doing jumping jacks in there? Philly joint, 86, newly number 15. All right. Well, welcome to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is this your first time live? If so, welcome a thousand times. Oh, you're a new sub, new subscriber. Y'all make sure y'all spam the chat with welcome. Spam the chat. I mean spam it too. Okay, these braids. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They still a little sore. Wait a minute. I'm moving my head too much. Hey, and I had them on top. Ah. Ooh, the witch has a help. But you know, ain't no miracles, y'all. It, it was it's still a little tender. It's a little tender. 
Welcome, y'all. Make sure y'all spam the chat and say welcome, welcome, welcome to Philly Join 86. We are so glad to have you. We appreciate you being here. Patricia Joaquin, Miss Tampa, Florida, is in the house. What's up, lady? DS is here. Hey, thank you for being number 19. He he L E L. Good afternoon. You and DS. I know y'all running the reflection corner for me. Um, unless DT show up, you know, DT takes over the reflection corner because that's his spot. Jenny Patterson, thank you for being number 19. All right. Well, thank you. Whether it's 18 or 19, I appreciate you. How you doing? Miriam Sanfleur is number 20. Hey, happy Wednesday. Callie is in the house. Hey, boo. X. Hi, sis. How are you? I'm so glad to see you. Oh, Malaya Lachelle is 25. Shani is 24. Okay. T Callie, you 26? Listen, my sisters done slid up in here because we got to talk. Th this is why I love y'all. Angie Girl is number 29. Hey, now. I like it. I like it. Y'all. Hmm, them people got news. The beautiful and gorgeous Nisi Rose is in the house. The Ghanaian bombshell herself. And she's like number 31. Hey, sis. How you doing? We still got to talk. I ain't forgot you. Mm -mm. We still have to gossip. Okay. Angel Gamer is here. Thank you for being number 32. My Tracy Lashley. Hello, doll. She's 31. I love it. Who else we got in here? Vintage 1970 is 32 and so is Cloud9. Thank you to both of you. Shannon Campbell. Are you new? Oh, look at her cute little cheeks. Hi. Welcome. This is your. This is her first time live. Listen, spam the chat. We have another beautiful little sister, Shannon Campbell. Who, I need y'all to welcome Shannon Campbell and Philly Join. I need y'all to spam the chat. And I'm not seeing spam. I need to see welcome in the chat so much that I can't read nothing. DV, thank you for being 35. Nikita T, what's up? How you doing? Thank you for being 33. Sharon Howard, how are you? Author and authorine. What is that? Type something else. Tell me what you mean so I can be on board with you. I'm with you. Just let me know. Lady T, thank you for being number 39. This is your first time. All right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I must not have gotten to the welcomes yet. Okay, here they go. Because I'm like, I know it better be some welcomes up in here. Okay. Y'all know how we move around here. Moving around so much, the doctor's having trouble getting a heartbeat today. Oh, well, that's a good sign. And my sis Renee is listening at work. Hey, Renee. All right. I like it. I like it. There you go. Warm and welcoming energy. Y'all notice how we move over here. Poetic lyrics. Thank you for being 39, sis. Y'all know we do not play about warmth and family and being loving. This is what we do. Always remember that being sweet will keep you young longer. You say you a grandmama of grown kids. Okay, that is that one of your grandbabies or you just still got a baby face girl? Let us know. You know, it's a lot of pretty girls over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so welcome to you. Welcome to you. There are grown ladies here with grown kids, grown grandkids. This is indeed the grown porch. Okay. Now, we got some young folks and y'all are welcome, but it's a whole lot of grown people over here. Brian Patterson, thank you for being 42, bro. Oh, uh, thank you. Pasiana, where you been? We miss you, doll face. All right, Mama Baby is here. She is 52. Y'all tell Peanut, hey. Dana Cutler, 29. Miss Steelers Nation, black and yellow. Miss Dogan, to you is in the house. Man, my sister slid in. Hey, thank you for being 49. I know that's right. You ready for the giggles. I know I know it. Rochelle, hey, sis, thank you for being 48. So look, y'all come in, get comfortable, hit the like button. You know we got to do the um, a little bit of housekeeping. Rachel Hinton, what a beautiful lady. How you doing? Cool gamers, always cool, always in the building. Y'all make sure y'all hit your like button, okay? Try to get comfortable. We getting ready to do this thing, okay? We getting ready to do this thing. And um, this thing called gossiping is what we about to do. So let's hit the housekeeping. Let's knock it out the way. KK, thank you for being 55. I appreciate you. So listen, 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 listen. First of all, make sure 
that you hit the like button. Make sure you keep your like number in the chat. Remember, you never know when I'm going to ask for a like number, when, if, what number I'm going to ask for. You just don't know. So make sure that you put yours in the chat. Shaniqua Belton, thank you for being number 61. Make sure you put yours in the chat. Um, keep track of it. If two people hit the button at the same time, I'm taking the first person that, that responds. That's just, just what it is. But remember, you can't win if you ain't in. Aries Sun, thank you for being 63. All right. Oh, your knees hurt. You got author and authorine. Oh, girl. Listen, I didn't even know the name my author writers anything fancy. I just got regular author, but I like that. Angie girl say, hey, peanut. So listen, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. First of all, you know, happy to be happy. Thank you for being like number 40, 55. I'm trying to give you 45. All right. So listen, hit your like button. Make sure your like number's in the chat. You can't win. If you ain't in, you don't know what number I'm going to call, when I'm going to do it, how, when, which live stream. Like, I just do all types of stuff, okay? But don't play unless you want me to have your cash app. If it's a secret, then just don't play, okay? Number two. Make sure that y'all are greeting people in the chat. If you see somebody new, if it's a new face, even if you don't know if this is their first time, say hi. People like to be greeted. Folks like to feel welcome. Tiger Eye Oracle, hey, thank you for being like number 70. People like to be greeted. Folks like to feel welcome. Everybody is supposed to feel welcome here. That's what this porch does. So make sure that everyone feels welcome. Nobody should feel tolerated. Nobody likes that, okay? So let's not do that to anyone else. Also, let's keep the comments on the people on the screen and not on each other. We can agree to disagree respectfully. No insults of any kind are ever tolerated. We don't do it. Some people call it trolling. I just call it tragic. Delicia, thank you for being 107. Oh, Princess with the puppy, thank you for being 71. All right, all right. Okay, Queen of Hearts KS, thank you for being 70. Sierra Harris, thank you for being 71. So make sure that we stay respectful, tongue and teeth fall out. Can folks do not? Okay. All right. And if you have a favorite and you super, super sensitive, you know, this my I don't know if this is a safe place because we don't spare anybody over here. Y'all, I'm trying to get this hair out my face, but I don't want to pull it because my scalp is still sensitive. Okay. Like my scalp is super sensitive. So I'm trying to find a way to keep this hair out of my face so I can run my mouth without having to worry about no goddamn hair. Because y'all know hair is one of the last things that Shanitra ever wants to be bothered with. I simply do not have the time, okay? So look, first things first, you guys. Cheryl, thank you for being 72. Who's got like number 90? Who's got 90? Who's got like number 90? It's 59 after, and I'm going to give it to 6 o'clock even, so top of the hour. Who's got like number 90? Who's got it? Who's got it? I'm going to just wait. Top of the hour is the, is the deadline. So look, looky, looky, looky. Um, Before we get to the gossip that just makes us laugh, forever grateful. Hi, welcome. Is this your first time live? Oh, let me put that out there. If this is your first time on the live stream, please put FTL for first time live so we can welcome you personally to the front porch where we gossip. We are the royal family. And we extend the invitation for you to be family too, okay? We gossip, but we keep it clean over here. How you doing? Welcome. Oh, my days. Hey, now. Thank you for being 78, sis. Glad you're here. Thank you for being number 60, Lisa Jameson. Mo, thank you for being 77. All right. So listen, before we get to the gossip, it's kind of funny and all that good stuff. This is your first time. Forever grateful. Y'all know the rules. Spam the chat. Welcome forever grateful. Welcome forever grateful. All right. Sierra Harris, this is her first time live too. So I need y'all to welcome forever grateful and Sierra Harris. Don't y'all disappoint me. Make sure y'all are welcoming the ladies as they come in. And I want to see welcome spam the chat. I'm not joking. I'll stop this whole thing. <laughs> I ain't joking either. I'm serious. I really will. I bet you I will. <laughs> so look. A little bit of news that um, some of you may be aware of, some of you may not, before we get to the gossip that's kind of funny and all of that stuff. I want to give an ex I want to extend um, condolences to the family of Nollywood actor Junior Pope. Junior Pope lost his life earlier today. Um, 
it was one of those things that was shocking. Um, we do have friends in common. I've only spoken with him once in life, um, but I've watched so many of his movies, so many of his bodies of work. This is a young man who's only 39 years old. He has a young wife, three beautiful, beautiful children. They just bought a home in December and everything was looking so promising for this young man. Hey, Queena, thank you for being 84. And um, they were going to film is what I was told. And they were on boats and they were crossing the river. And the last video that he posted on Instagram, he was you know, telling the people like, hey, I'm on this boat. I don't even have a life jacket. And, um, you know, all oh, the risk we take to bring you entertainment. And he was just in such good spirits. His smile was so bright. Karma Cedar Jones, thank you for being 85. His smile was so bright. And more than once, he can be heard while he was broadcasting, telling the young man who was operating the boat, slow down, take it easy, slow down, take it easy. He literally said, I'm the only child of my parents and I have three sons that I that I have to raise, that I'm going to raise. And so take it easy, you know, slow down, you know, not so much. You're small, small by small. And the young man apparently didn't take it seriously. Um, something happened on that water. They collided with another boat. Some of the crew were all, also lost their lives on that water. Hey, Yolanda Franklin, thank you for being 88. And... Um, they reported him gone. Well, we got the report over here this morning. Um, well, early afternoon. And then um, videos came out of them pulling his, carrying his lifeless body. And then we got a report that he was indeed, you know, they, they were able to revive him. Hey, Fresh Strawberry. Couture Bay, thank you for being 91, my beautiful niece. And, um, they got him to the hospital to work on him, but he did not survive that encounter. So prayers to his entire family, his young, beautiful wife, those beautiful children, his parents, and everyone who's grieving the loss of that young man. Hey, Duke girl, thank you for being 91. So yeah, I, you know, of course we're going to gossip. We're going to do what we do. Um, I know we have our own entertainment industry here, much like they have their own entertainment industry there. But I think that it would have been wrong of me to hop on here and tell jokes and laugh and kiki like that did not happen because that did happen. And so an entire nation is mourning. Um, his colleagues in Nollywood are mourning. His friends, people who care about him are mourning. Um, was my junior pope, Yolanda Franklin, a Nollywood actor who lost his life earlier today. Um, I was affected. It made me very sad, very, very sad. So y'all, please remember that family in your prayers, okay? Um, if y'all go check Famous Blog Nigeria, Gossip Mill Nigeria, any of them, I'm sure all the blogs over there have the information. Um, and if you go take a peek, y'all can see how it played out. It was devastating news. It was tragic. Um, it was hopeful for a minute. You know, it, it looked like he might come out of it, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, the Lord said no. Okay. So just like we shout for his yeses, we have to accept his no's. Okay. And understand that he does know best. That's all I can say. But we got to get past that and get into the gossip because that's why we're here. I just couldn't just jump in and start running my mouth and pretend like that did not happen because that wouldn't be very nice. Okay. So. Y'all saw what's going on. Hi, Keisha. This is your first time live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey. All right. Another lovely lady. Y'all make sure y'all welcome Keisha to the chat. This is her first time. Let's get into it. Zuma Montalvo. Is this your first time, sis? I don't remember seeing you here, but welcome, just in case. But let us know. Anybody who is, if it's your first time, please make sure you put FTL or first time live. Let us know. So we can welcome you, okay? Because this is where ladies come to gossip, but we're still ladies at the end of the day, okay? <laughs> you know, we ain't gonna ask, we sure gonna talk about these people. Hey, Anel, thank you for being 96. So look, 
They say BravoCon is going to be canceled this year. Hey, Wicked 548. Thank you for being at number 96. Hey, Breach M. I was shocked, to say the least, when I was told that BravoCon ain't going to be BravoCon in for 2024. Let me grab the articles, child. I'm going to, matter of fact, so many articles on it. I'm breaking up really bad. Am I? Okay. Hold on. Hey, give me shelter. Thank you for being 98. Ooh. What's going on with my connection? Hold on. Okay. Is this any better? Can y'all hear me now? I hope so. I'm frozen. Okay. Oh, y'all can hear me, but the screen is frozen. I think it's because it's storming outside, but hold on. Let me try something. Okay, so let's do this for a second until I switch back over. Oh, it's your second time, Zoma? All right, girl. Good to see you. Child, the connection is bad. I think it's a storm. I think the storm situation is real. Okay. Now that's what I think is going on. I think this storm situation is real. Whether I would like to acknowledge it or not, it is a very real thing. A very real thing. Am I frozen again? Because I see Auntie saying frozen. Am I frozen again? Because on my end, I don't see that I'm frozen. So y'all have to like let me know. I depend on you all to let me know what's up. I am. Wow. Okay. Am I still frozen? Very frozen. Okay, so let's try something else. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Am I still? Like, I have literally tried to free up everything in the world to make sure that we have a good connection. Okay, so I will stay on this one. Um, I just feel really bad. I don't know what is going on with Xfinity. Y'all know I hate those people so bad. I truly hate Xfinity. I don't understand. Um, he, he LEL saying it's a little in and out. So the connection is really bad. Keisha says she can hear me. Sharon says it's probably the weather. I hate this. Like, I really don't like it. I really don't like it. Nisi say the audio is great. I don't I don't understand this, y'all. Um, this is gonna make me very unhappy. This is really going to make me extremely unhappy. Let me try one more time. Okay. Max say I'm freezing, but the audio is good. How about now? Is this is this any better, guys? Is this any better with the sound and the picture? Philly <laughs> Joy say April showers bring May flowers. I sure hope so. Cause these showers are off the chain. Cause Bay says audio is good. So 
<laughs> Y'all, I don't like this because I want to really like hand neck. So y'all can hear, apparently, I'm just not going to be able to get a picture out, is what it's giving. It's giving, I'm not going to be able to get a picture to connect. Everybody can hear me, though. So at least y'all know I'm alive. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. Okay. Angel Gamer said it sounds perfect in the UK. Okay. We can say I'm like them old karate movies. My mouth is moving after the fact. Hey, Kiko. Thank you for being 105. <laughs> Sharon Howard says you get the photo shoot. I love it. So, hey, Brandon Martin, thank you for being 104. Y'all, I tried. I don't know what is going on. I'm giving it my best for whatever reason. We're getting a very, very um, weak signal, weak connection. I don't know why. The storm business is crazy. <laughs> Max say my mouth is moving, but it's not matching the words. Oh, no. Well, yeah. Well, we're going to have a laugh. Let's just get into it, child. So, Bravo Con, not happening this year. Let me grab this article. We're going to talk about them anyway. We're going to talk about them anyway. So, I went ahead and went with Vulture.com because there are many articles on Bravo Con being canceled this year. Okay. So, the article from Vulture reads, no Bravo Con in 2024. And we're choosing to blame Giselle Bryant. Now, this is by writer J.P. Frank. I don't know what angle he's coming from, but let's get a little bit of this article and then we'll catch another one. Okay, we'll catch another one. Um, <laughs> so the, um, the writer Jason Frank over at Vulture, he says, you will not get to see Jessel Tank in her full glory. Who is Jessel Tank, Jesus? Okay. You, will, you won't get to see Jessel Tank in her full glory, among other things, happening live this year. The next BravoCon won't be held until 2025. So they're just canceling it for this year at Caesars Forum in Las Vegas, November 14th through 16th. Now, instead of 2024 BravoCon, Bravo is running a series of events debuting this spring in Los Angeles and New York, beginning with Watch Party by Bravo. Okay. Hey, Cecilia Norwood, screenings of upcoming episodes and sneak peeks. That sounds like a snooze fest. There's no confirmation as to why BravoCon is skipping 2024. We would like to blame Giselle Bryant as she is the cause of most grievances. I just, so, okay, he's being sarcastic or facetious, however you want to put it. Okay. DS said he had staffing issues. Hey, Dana Brown, thank you for being 111. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. But then there's also the fact that Andy Cohen just lost a ton of money in a scam. Yes, he did. We did call that out. He lost money in that scam. Hey, Zeline, thank you for being 111. Cecilia, thank you for being 102. Um, the fact that Cohen's currently being sued left and right, and the fact that there's no confirmation of New York's new premiere date. And the lack of Jessel would be damning, his word, not mine. Who can say, just blame Giselle. So he was being funny. Dr. J, thank you for being 116. Hey, beautiful black. So yeah, they will have Bravo Con next year, but apparently there will be no Bravo Con this year at all. It's not happening. Philly Joint says she thought it was Andy's fault. Yeah, it, it sounds like it could be. But I don't know, you know, whether we can confirm that or whether, you know, that's just an option. I don't know. I don't know.
Okay. So what do y'all think? Do y'all think this is about Andy or if or do y'all think that um this is basically them trying to kind of save face because of all the mess that happened with Potomac? Yeah, I was trying to see if a better connection was available. That was my fault, y'all. I was trying to be smart, and apparently I wasn't. Um, what do y'all think this is about? What do y'all think? Personally, I believe it's a combination of all of those things. I think Andy Cohen's lawsuits may have a bearing on it. Can y'all hear me? Okay, Nisa can hear me because she's answering. Say, uh, she thinks it's a mixture of both. I agree. I totally agree. I think it's a mixture of the, the lawsuits, the drama, the articles coming out about their anti-Black and xenophobic behavior. Yeah, they're trying to save face, I think. I think that's a bigger thing. Couture Bay say Andy doesn't watch these shows. He doesn't. He absolutely doesn't. Yes, remember to hit the engagement button. Peanut says um, probably the lawsuit's more than anything. I agree. I do agree. Totally. Potomac backlash lawsuits and accountability. Yes, all of those things. I think right now with everything that's happening, with the fact that they keep trying to pull this takedown of the image of Black women, um, being called out on it, the fact that they have doubled down and tried to sell it to us anyway to try to get their home run. It hasn't worked. And I think that they want to save face. I think they know BravoCon would be the perfect storm for everything to go up in smoke. Um, I've seen where they allow viewers to ask questions. I think it would be too difficult for them to make sure that no Black women viewers ask questions if they specifically strategically made sure no black women ask questions they know that we're going to call it out um that the lawsuits i'm sure they don't want people asking about lawsuits at bravo con um another thing max says time for andrew to go bravo needs a new face absolutely they do absolutely i think also also i think that with giselle making the claim that there were death threats it's going to look like, well, are there death threats or not? Because if there's these these vile, dangerous death threats, then wouldn't she have to see Bravo coming out? Like, I'm just asking. I'm not accusing. I'm only asking. If you tell me that you and your children are getting death threats, this lady sat on that reunion stage and she said, she said, not me said, she said that they said, I'm going to come to your house and take your children's lives. I don't believe anyone said that to her. Let's be clear. Oh, he too busy swimming in snow, Coco. Well, you know, he is the powder ranger. Go, go powder ranger. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe he's, you know, hitting the slopes. Sharon Howard says accountability is like karma. It catches up with you. Yeah, that's true. That is so very true. Cecilia said they're trying to clean house. They need to start with Andy Cohen. Too much colorism, backlash, and lawsuits. I agree. I just wanted to drop that in y'all's lap to see what y'all thought about this. Please hit the like button. Please put your like number in the chat. Barbara says, I think it's both. Andy got loads of heat for not holding Giselle, Robert, and Ashley accountable. Mm -hmm. I think that in my heart, I don't believe they really care what we think, but I think they don't want to be confronted with it. I think they don't want to be in an environment or in a forum where viewers can walk up to the mic and ask questions. I also think they don't want to be in a situation where bloggers pay to come to BravoCon so that they can catch Bravo liberties and ask them questions. I don't think anyone wants to be asked about the minutia that's surrounding RHOP. I, I just don't. I think there's some things that they don't want to have to answer um, that Andrew Cohen, the Powder Ranger, the White Ranger, would want to have to answer about his allegations of hitting the slopes with Bravo Leopardies and telling a young woman that he's wants her to watch him, you know, have coitus with other people, like all of these strange things. 
Um, Gimme Shelter says, Nitra, I took a look at the truly original production. Did you know they produced Basketball Wives and Shaws of Sunset too? It's no surprise they encourage various forms of racism. Look at the execs. Ooh, give me shelter, girl. Mm, you saying it. Ooh, Yolanda said accountability is kryptonite to them. I agree. Nisi says, Andy barely asked any of the real questions from viewers, so I can only imagine what would happen at BravoCon. I saw that on Twitter today, as a matter of fact, when I was getting all the information together, you know, just to know what we want to talk about. I saw a lot of people were really disgruntled at the fact that Andy asked no questions from viewers. It was like stuff he made up. Because, excuse me, y'all, you know, you can go on Twitter and you will get an idea for the type of questions that people are asking. You can see like kind of the temperature of the audience, the viewership, and Andy ignored all of that. Brandon says, I think it's all it's about all the backlash caused by Dr. Jackie, necktie, Portia, Andy and his reckless behavior. Bravo is not popular right now, and he's scared of Bravo Con being a financial failure. Ooh. Ooh. Max says Giselle is getting death threats. She should quit the show. For her and her kids' protection. That's what I would say. But I think that Giselle wants to pay for the she shed in the woods. Forever grateful. Thank you for being like number 123. I appreciate you. Who's like number 155? Who's got it? Until 24 the hour. Who's like number 155? I see somebody telling Jabret Williams, hey, but I don't see Jabret. Hey, Jabret. Yeah, it's it's all of the things. Yeah, Mac is on point. Mac is usually on point. Sometimes make me crazy, but Mac is on point. Okay. My sister on the phone said you never win when you're dirty. Bye bye, Bravo. Bravo con. Mm-hmm. I don't think you should win when you play dirty. Leah, thank you for being 127. Yes, this is a mess. This is a mess. I don't remember um, hearing about this happening before. Sharon Middleton says, okay, I'm late. So are they going to cancel BravoCon because of RHOP? I don't know, sis. That's what I don't know. I'm asking y'all what y'all think. They said this year they're canceling it and they'll be back next year in Las Vegas. So maybe what they're thinking is that if they cancel it for a year and they give time for everything to die down, for the lawsuits to be settled, for people to get paid off brick by brick, like my sister says, she says she won't Bravo um, done one by one brick by brick, but for the people to be paid off brick by brick, for um, hoping that the, the, the crowd forgets about all the anti-Black, anti-African sentiment on this show, on all of their shows, um, for us to forget about a lot of things. I think they want to, I think, I think they want to give things time to cool down, cool off, cool down, you know, blow over. I do believe the writer over at the Vulture had a point that it could well be due to, you know, our, you know, New York not having a start date and them not knowing what's going to happen with that. It's a lot going on over there, Bravo, honey. They, it ain't looking good. It ain't looking good at all. Kelly says, seems like there were two different production teams for RHOP. One for the crappy season and another one for the finale and the reunion. It was like two different shows. You right. What do you think they did? I think you're right. Sharon Middleton is a new royal family member. Listen, we, family. I need y'all to spam the chat with emeralds and crowns and welcome our newest sister, Sharon Middleton. Welcome, sis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please make sure you email me or inbox me on Instagram, your birthday and cash app, because we do celebrate birthdays for, for members. So if you are a member of the royal family, there's a crown by your name. If I don't have your birthday in Cash App, please make sure I do. You can email me, Shanitra at philsdaughter.com. Or you can inbox me on Instagram, Shanitra underscore Royal. Make sure I have your birthday 
and your cash app, okay? Thank you so much, sis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lady Blue, thank you for being 130. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, the she shed in the wood. She has to pay for it. So she's not going to leave the show. But anyone else would if, if they were telling the truth. Um, Frenchie. Hey, Frenchie. Say so Giselle felt comfortable to offer her meow meow to her boss. Yes, she did. That's really creepy. When he is ready to dive in the lady pond on national TV. And we, the viewers, should believe Giselle isn't Andy's favorite. Right. Because that was grossly inappropriate. Grossly inappropriate. Yes. Barbara says, I don't believe Giselle. I'm sure she gets threats probably to smack her, but I don't believe anything else. Well, you know, she likes to demonize black women. So she put that out there to tell the world that black women are threatening her. Philly Joy says, I think it's all of what you said. It's too much heat on them to have an open mic session. And don't forget the bloggers. I would never go to BravoCon, but there are a lot of bloggers who make it their business to attend BravoCon, to get interviews, to get exclusives, to get an opportunity to even get a sound bite or ask a question or two. I don't think they can handle it this year. I don't. Tracy Lashley says, I don't think they're coming back 2025, the beginning of the end. Oh, so you think they're going to end up canceling the Las Vegas plans that they have for next year, too? Now, that's something. Sharon said, why can't they just do the right thing? Now, that's, sis, that's the question. That is the question, okay? Why can't they just do the right thing? I think that's a fair question. Now, my sis on the phone says, RHOP, Jackie, don't forget Dr. Jackie and her problematic statements, the lawsuits, the allegations, the colorism, the low budget, nasty. It's been a firing announcement from Bravo every month, throwing drinks, all the talent over on Carlos's YouTube anyway. That is true. Woo! Oh my gosh. She said Carlos may as well vote host BravoCon all fifth on YouTube. I think he could get away with it. I think he could do BravoCon all fifth. I, I, I would watch it. <laughs> I really would. I might be low-key laughing, but I would watch it. Y'all, please hit the engagement button. There should be bubbles going up left and right. Left and right. And right. And they still have not announced an RHOA cast. So y'all keep that in mind, too. There's a lot going on over there at Bravo right now. It's a little tough at Bravo at this very moment. And NBC Universal. And truly original. Debbie Garcia say her birthday tomorrow. Mm-hmm, girl, we going to be back. Mm-hmm. Now, now that we got that out the way, we got to talk about something else. Hey, Cassie G, what up, sis? Listen, I want us to have a little chat about who brought the color conversation to RHOP. And I know it may seem as though we're flogging or overflogging a dead horse, but we got to. Because we see people still trying to produce and push false narratives against the black ladies on the show. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not comfortable with it. If I'm being honest, I'm not comfortable. I'm completely uncomfortable with it. But I want y'all to hear something. I got a little audio. Got a little audio. No, they have not started filming yet. They will start filming soon, so they say but they have not announced the cast and you still have cast members saying they don't know who the cast is. So they have still not announced it. It's tomorrow, Londa. It's tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. Okay. So yes, Callie season one, but I want y'all to hear something before I play this. I want y'all to keep in your mind. I want you to put an image in your mind of what we witnessed on Sunday. Can you do that? Can, can everybody think back? It ain't that far. It's not even been a whole week. But I want y'all to think back to the fact that to everything that just happened on Sunday. Everything that just happened on Sunday. Let me refresh your memories. Y'all recall during part two of that reunion, we watched 
Candace Dillard Bassett give us an accurate timeline of what happened between her and Robert, right? We watched that happen, didn't we? Okay, because I, I, I remember, I remember watching and we talked about it. And remember when she gave out the timeline, because the entire season, Robert Dixon led us to believe that she quit speaking to Candace because Candace went on House of Aaron and said that she was a fraud because that's what that that is the one clip that production continued to play ad nauseum. One word to describe Robert Dixon, fraud, and they kept playing it over and over and over. And they kept and she kept insinuating overtly, covertly, blatantly. It's because you went on social media and you weaponized in social media and you said that I had a plot on social media. That was supposedly why she was so upset with Candace and why she wasn't speaking to her. Priscilla Clemens, thank you for me, 108. And then when they were on that sprinter, on that never ending trip in, in Texas, in San Antonio, they were in the sprinter and Candace said, but I reached out to you and you didn't answer back. Robert led us to believe that it was because of what Candace said online. But that wasn't true. So Candace gave us a timeline that after the reunion, Robert posted a picture with the same long hair on and that Robert was, um, she thought Robert looked nice. She gave her an inbox and said you know oh long hair and she's and robert responded with this passive aggressive response about being white adjacent and that's probably not a good look blah 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 candace asked her are you mad she left her on red when she heard about what happened with one and the chick from canada in the hotel she said i'm sorry this is happening to you and your family she left her on red and then the response from Candace on social media took place only after that. So then it makes me think for a minute. And first off, I'm mad at myself. I don't know about y'all, but I am mad at me because if I had thought about this thing in a right way from the beginning, common sense would have said, Nietzsche, that doesn't make sense. Candace made those statements after the Canada story came out and, and Robert did the $5 Patreon paywall. So why would she have... You know, the minute Candace said, I'm sorry, this is happening to you and your family. Why would that silence be about that? Like, it just didn't make sense. And I should have caught on, but I didn't. Thank goodness Candace caught on and brought it out. And then the minute Candace lays out the timeline, Robert Dixon, hey, Destiny, immediately pivoted, immediately changed that story. She immediately said it was due to Candace's comments to Giselle about her white looking tail. And she's absolutely right, because that is exactly why Giselle feels comfortable to tell those lies, because she knows and feels as though she will be propped up and protected by production and the showrunners for her proximity to whiteness, period. So Robert says she was so upset about what Candace said to, about what Candace said to Giselle, not that she said anything to her, but about what she said to Giselle. So let's let's I want to I want y'all to get this the tear the tear the tears the fake tears hold on give me just a second because y'all know I love an audio moment so we're gonna have an audio moment all right let's go on back let's cruise on back it's nothing like some good audio Okay, come on. The Variety article and, you know, everything else. I felt she was being critical of my job. It's just as a friend, I, that's something you just don't do to a friend. I, I, I would like to respond. Yeah. What is missing here is a very specific timeline. So we shot the reunion last year on, I think, January 19th. On January 23rd, you posted something and you still had like your reunion hair and it was, I thought it was pretty. So I said, oh, pretty. 
No, you said long right. hair. Long hair, yes. So, and you responded and said something like, well, I guess I should probably... I said it probably makes me look more like a white, white. adjacent looking woman, yes. which I can't imagine is a good thing. Yes. So this and was yes. after the reunion, right. her comments about... Um, Listen now. Her privileged skin, her previous tweet about white adjacent yes. looking woman... Those hit me hard as well. Okay. Can, can I, I would, can yeah, I just finish I just, you my, can finish. yes, uh -huh. I, I understand that. Yeah. And I received that now. Um, my response at the time was, are you mad at me? Correct. And you, and you did not respond. Correct. In March, I texted you after oh. the stuff happened with Juan and said, I'm sorry, this is happening to you. And I'm sorry, it's happening to your family. You didn't respond to that's now to messages that you've ignored so then yeah when this stuff comes out about you and the paywall it's like oh she's like on one and i was pissed pissed i tweeted what i tweeted it hurt you so i will apologize for hurting you because that's not what i wanted to do okay so i so i did not respond to your message so listen now once she can no longer lie that oh i didn't respond because of what you said on twitter the girl hadn't said nothing on twitter yet listen to what she does and then i'm gonna let y'all hear something else come on okay yes because that colorism conversation is so uncomfortable for me i understand here we go it was an extremely uncomfortable thing to be accused of i've never experienced that in my life never and i did not know how yeah, how do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. And I just did not know how. Hey, Sophia, darling, let me read your comment. She says, see, Robin knew everything down to the syllable of their text. She knew what she was doing in Orange Candace. She wanted a problem and an excuse to be mad. Hello. Hello. But I wanted y'all to hear how she quickly switched it. All of a sudden... It wasn't because of what she said online. It was because of what you said to Giselle. And I was so happy. And then why did you say it? Max said, why did it hit us? Why did it hit her heart? She's more percentage European, ain't she? 60% or somewhere around that neighborhood. <laughs> she must have forgotten. Candace is very, a very educated woman. Candace was using calculus on her. It was sad as Candace could have used an abacus and she still would have missed the bus. Koku said, I was disgusted. Like, you're a whole white man, Robert. A whole one. A whole one. Nisi said, Robert had to switch it up quick. She didn't have a choice. She didn't have a choice because of the lies that she had, you know, told. And with Candace calling her on it, not being that she tried to interrupt Candace, but when Candace kind of held it down and she wasn't able, to interrupt, she was stuck. You get what I mean? She was truly stuck. She didn't have a choice at that point. Because I want to make sure y'all get the rest of this. Hold on. Respond to your message. Okay, yes. Because that colorism conversation is so uncomfortable for me. I understand. So uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. It was an extremely uncomfortable thing to be accused of i've never experienced that in my life never and i did not know how you know yeah how do you navigate that i mean it was just extremely hurtful <laughs> to not only be on the receiving end of being accused of being a colors which i think is horrible but still when the stuff about juan came out all of y'all talked about it but nobody accused me of plotting, of... Let, we ain't finna listen to you with, with the rest of that yodeling you doing. Because she was she did all that, y'all, and then dropped one tear. She sat up there chewing on the words. <laughs> Not one tear came out. She chewed on those words. She tried to do a little fake hyperventilating look. <laughs> Nothing came out. But listen, this I want y'all to understand that this is the same lady you're about to hear. I'm going to play another audio from you. This is from about season one, episode 10. Mm -hmm. Same lady. And I want y'all to... 
I want y'all to notice how comfortable she is talking about color here. But she cried on that reunion. She wasn't comfortable. See, this is what I want y'all to understand before you hear it, okay? This is not someone who is ignorant of what she's doing. This is someone who up until she got clocked for her bull crap was pretending to be very well versed in all things black, right? So she's not an innocent, ignorant, clear heifer. She's not, do not allow her to bring her clear adjacent tears. Mm? What Benassi call them, alligator tears? Don't bring your alligator tears over here, baby. Mm -mm. This is the same lady. Listen very careful to this audio. I want y'all to hear this. About black history lesson. Oh my goodness. This is her telling Katie that she's going to give Katie, crazy Katie, a black history lesson. Listen now. About black history lesson. Oh my goodness. Are you seriously going to bring this up again? I am going to bring this okay, up. Okay, what do you have to say? Because you were quite adamant when I brought up an issue. You didn't really bring up an issue. What you did was, unfortunately, you were standing there watching everybody dance and have a good time and being judgmental and then coming over to me and saying something that was completely ridiculous, which is that Michael's groping Andrew's butt. And then you said, is that a white thing? Yes. That's like the most ignorant date white men. You were married to a white man. So? Oh, I'm the expert on white. I didn't say you were the expert. Because there's a difference. You might have a better answer than me. There's a difference between, 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 between white people and black people and biracial people. There's a difference between black people and white people's experiences. I don't know what Robin's problem is. This is the same. Are y'all hearing her? She said there's a difference between black people's and white people's experiences. Stop right there. You might say, but Nitra, she thinks she black. No hell she don't. No the hell she don't. That's number one. Number two, somebody who has the presence of mind, season one, episode 10, all the many moons ago, she understood at that time magically then she could understand that your experiences are different based on your your upbringing your environment heredity all that good stuff but magically now that black women actual black women are talking not her cosplaying as a black woman now that actual black women are talking she don't understand that there's a difference in your experience based on how you show up in the world she she don't get none of that now but she sure got it then Frenchie says a light-skinned woman talking about colorism should not hurt or upset you unless you are colorist, Robert. That's what I'm saying. I just want y'all to see how this tramp is playing in your face. Okay? Poetic lyrics say that's why it's imperative to always go back down memory lane. So y'all put it in the chat. Back down memory lane. Yes, that's where we always have to go. Niecy Rose says she was real comfortable. This year, she's so uncomfortable, she had to chew on her words and look like Alfalfa from the Little Rascals. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah, they wore it out in season one. Wore it out. Even say when Robert is a white person herself is crazy. Yes. Back down memory lane. This is what this, this is why we always have to go. Cause see, I saw her photograph and it kind of made me laugh. And not then I was falling fast back down memory lane. Let me run it back. I want y'all to hear her again talk about you know your experiences are different. So nobody should tell me, oh Robert, just don't get it. Oh, she gets it just fine. This this whore is playing in your face. Look. but it seems like she always needs help with it and i really can't help her i really wanted to know the answer i mean i'm in the white guy and asking why are you asking me you're standing there Woo! see this is why i want katie to get off that dope and that, that liquor and come back because see katie didn't play hey miss gardner girl thank you for being 145 when i tell you katie didn't play she said then go find a white man and ask him. Toot toot beat beat bad girl katie say you sitting up here in front of me rick flair telling me it's a difference between white folks and black folks and you come to ask me who's not a white person if something is a white person thing how the hell would she know katie would have came out better to ask you you way more white than her she got a whole black mama and it looked like maybe a little a little pinch of black ran past your mama 
Shout out to Miss Gladys. She seemed like a cool lady. This ain't her fault. But we're not finna pretend like that's a black woman because it ain't. Tierra, thank you for 146. She said, I wish Wendy and Candace would have told Robin season one she had no issue with race and demand they run the tapes. That's what should have happened. What we're doing right now is what Candace and Wendy should have done on that stage unless they just over it. In which case, I can dig it too. So see, you say Robin and Glizzard. Lord, Glizzard, Jesus. I like that name. Glizzard. Okay. Robert Glizzard. Wait a minute. Oh, my throat dry. I need a drink bad. I need one bad. Whew. The girl is parched. But Robert and Glizzard, as you call her. <laughs> um this this M that they are that they are privileged and Candace is holding to them. Well, that's how they feel. And that's what it looks like. It looks like that's exactly how they feel. That obviously they're supposed to be holding to them. But let's let's listen to the I'm gonna back it up so y'all can hear her again explain to Katie that black people and white people have different experiences. Let's I, let's just do it. I like Blizzard. I, that's kind of flossy. White thing? Yes. That's what you're looking at. white men. You were married to a white man. So? I want an expert on white people. I didn't say you were an expert. Because there's a difference. You might have a better answer than me. There's a difference between white people and black people and biracial people. There's a difference between black people and white people's experiences. I don't know what Robin's problem is, but it seems like she always needs help with it, and I really can't help her. You really wanted to know the answer. I mean, I'm asking. Why are you asking me? You were standing there. I'm not sweating it. I really don't care. I really don't care. Okay. I really don't. Katie has no business calling me or Robin by Rachel, and she knows what we are. Now listen to now 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 listen at, at uh Glizzard as y'all call her. She has more business calling me or Robert by Rachel. She knows what we are. <laughs> y'all the one was talking color. Y'all brought this color conversation. You can't be mad because you opened the doors of the church and Katie Boat said the uh benediction. You can't be mad because Katie said church is out. You can't be mad because Katie said may the Lord watch between me and thee while we absent one from another. You can't be mad. Because she said, let the church say, yay, man. You can't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Let's go back. Let's, see. Let's keep going. There's nothing wrong with Katie being biracial, obviously. But to be ignorant and to call us that is not necessary. The reason why I said that to you guys was because I was just trying to point out what it's like. You're all offended by what's said to you that I say that's kind of like, you know, inflammatory. But you said something inflammatory to me. I'm showing you your hypocrisy. That's what I was trying to point out to you. That's why I said, listen, Blondie, with your green eyes. Don't you, like, look into your own family history? Because they're going to race all the time. It's stupid. It's offensive to me that you think that I'm not a black woman. I'm not just African-American. I'm also Caucasian. I'm biracial. What the hell is wrong with that? There's why do you have such a problem with it? You see what I'm saying? These are the people. They heckled and harassed that girl like hell. They heckled and harassed the hell out of Katie Boach. And I mean the pure hell out of Polo Katie. The pure hell. I go, oh, color this, color that. Are you black enough? Are you black enough today? Are you blacker yet? Do you get blacker? And, and neither one of y'all, neither one of you show up in the world as black women. Neither one of you. Brown Style say Rob admitted in season one or two that white people think she white or other race. Or other that, or other that, some white people were disparaging black people in front of her until she told them she identified as black. Ric Flair is lying. Yes, the Nature Boy is lying. Y'all, please hit the like button, okay? Angie girl, say this the same person who said she could pay. Yes, this is the same one. Now she's crying because Candace pinned her down on the lie she told about Candace on social media is the reason why she was upset and not responding to messages. Cream of Wheat said, you took me back to Sunday school. Okay, I'm just saying, they mad because Katie um, gave the benediction. But that's what that was. I just needed to point out, once again, the lies, the hypocrisy, the deceit, the, the foolishness, and the fact that they think that we're all slow. Why they think we're slow, not sure, but they clearly think that we're slow. Angel Gamer said, and Giselle referred to Ashley's hair as a big bush. When she referred to them also as white adjacent or, or, her, or her own words with dyeing their hair blonde. Yes, yes. 
Yes, not even 164. That's why I'm like, whatever black is in there, it's got to be like a toenail clipping or like some nose hair. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's not enough to measure. Poetic lyrics say, I think Katie, I, at this point, let me go back to this. At this point, Whoa, Vicky is blacker than Robert. And I don't believe that one either. Um, Poetic lyrics says, I think Katie was well aware of Team Yellow and their antics and was not willing to play their reindeer games at all. She absolutely, Katie was not with it. Katie was not with the foolishness. She was not feeling it. She was not digging it. Poetic lyrics say, I think Katie was well aware of the team, okay? Kelly says, because Katie presents more as black. If Katie looked more like her white father, they would have loved her, not questioned her blackness at all. There is more than one way to be black, idiots. I know that's right. But see, this is the thing. She, they wanted, I think that there was a little bit, I don't know. I, I don't know what their issue was with Katie. I think it was a control thing with Katie. I think they wanted to control how she behaved. I think they felt like, well, if you're not, you know, whatever, or you are multiracial or whatever, maybe, maybe they felt there was, maybe they felt that there was a certain way Katie was supposed to carry herself or present or whatever. Like I could never know what's in their heads. Cause I think those chicks are nuts. They really are on top of being deplorable human beings. I think they're very illogical, crazy people. I don't think they're normal. Barbara said Giselle and Robin truly didn't want Katie to refer to herself as biracial because she wasn't as light as them. They were actually, yep, gatekeeping the yellow. <laughs> like, you, you know, why, you just call yourself black. You better say you're black because you're dark. Um, it, it was a lot of that going on, too. They were trying to gatekeep that yellow. Um, we've seen that in pop culture, the little rapper girl that called herself light skin Keisha. There were a lot of people that lost their minds. You not light skin. You better stop calling yourself light skin. I'm like, why are y'all gatekeeping the light skin? Why is that? Is that like some kind of value statement? Like you can't call a garment couture if it's not over over 75% made on hand. Like, is this like one of those value things? Like, no, no, no. You're, you're saying biracial that has a light skin connotation. You can't use that. You're too dark. It was weird. They were really obsessed with Katie. Yep. How dare you not claim black when you look darker than us? Dumb and dumber. Yep, that's what Katie called him, Dumb and Dumber. Katie was proud of being biracial. I think she should be because her father was not a black person. That's it's almost like asking her to be ashamed of her father. That's not nice because I'll never be ashamed of my daddy. So I don't think anybody should be asked to be ashamed of their father or pretend like their father doesn't exist. Yeah, justice for Katie. They treated Katie really bad. They definitely tried to bully little Katie, and Katie held her own. Katie absolutely held her own. She did. Um, Quiet Storm said the issue they had with Katie is the same issue they had with Monique. They couldn't control her. Yep. Um, Koku said Jizz couldn't fathom Monique having hazel eyes. Yeah, I think that bothered her. The money, the hazel eyes, the lifestyle, the four homes, all the stuff that, you know, I think the hazel eyes on that pretty brown girl was doing something to her nerves too. It was like, okay, my claim to fame is my recessive traits and you're this brown girl and you have these stunning recessive eyes and it's such a contrast against your dark skin. And so I just can't stand this. And you got all this money in this life that I don't. Destiny said, Katie needs to get well first. She does, but I miss Katie. Honestly, I wish her recovery and health before wealth. Then come back and wrap Glizzy and regular Robin up. Not regular Robin. That is tough business. Cream of Wheat says Katie was Katie. She didn't put on. She was her. Hater, her, love her. She was her. Yes, she was. She really was. Her and Ashley used to get on my nerves, but I didn't, I'm not a fan of people being bullies, and they were clearly bullying that girl. Hey, Ian. What's up, nephew? How you doing? Peanut says she thinks they had a problem with, with Katie's valley girlness. They know Katie can function in white spaces. And they're too ghetto, even though they're so yellow. That's true. Katie can definitely function in those spaces. Giselle, who speaks like 12 years a slave, not so much. Yes, Angie girl, she did get it from her daddy. Absolutely. Callie said from the moment Monique said she had four houses, she made a permanent enemy out of Giselle. Oh, yes. She was mad about them four houses, baby. Them four houses stuck in her craw and in her jowl. Um, Andrew Mack say Glizzard 
and Robert want the best of both worlds. They want to make it known that they're black, but they love being white adjacent and having, and even having some ambiguity. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what happens. And that's what we see. Okay. Can I talk about it historically just a little bit? I'm not going to get on a soapbox. I swear. Can I y'all do you mind? I hope not. Cause I'm going to just try it. If y'all tell me to shut up, I'll hush. But tell me to hush nice. Don't be mean to me. But historically, we saw this kind of thing happen. Um, there's a period in American history where there were full-blown Caucasian women who would try to pass for a biracial, multiracial Black woman in order to take advantage of the colorism in the Black community, which is a direct byproduct of white supremacy racism. They would do so because by being so to, to having such a proximity or looking like a black woman who's white passing, they could marry the top of the top in the black community. They could marry the black doctors, the black lawyers, the black judges, the black people who had affluence and wealth during that time. Okay. That's one thing that happened a lot. So things like whoa, Vicky and bad Bobby baby, whatever you call that thing, um, glizzard and them and Robert, that's not new. That's not new. That's literally a part of our history. Max say, get on that soapbox. Okay. Well, I'm on it. Okay. And then I want y'all to look up something in your spare time called the Blue Vein Society. Okay. That is a real thing. There was a period in our history in this country where mixed race, multi-race, biracial people who had some black parentage somewhere literally referred to themselves as a blue vein society. And they were very much just as violent toward black people, especially black men, as any Caucasian person in the South and various parts of this country. So much so that they gate kept and made sure that black men were not trying to marry their pale passing daughters. So like, please let's talk about the reality. This is not new. What they're doing is absolutely a form and a direct, a direct descendant and, and byproduct of white supremacy racism. What other reason would there be for someone who looks like Robert, who is clearly not a black woman, just because you can claim that there's a scintilla of African blood somewhere flowing through your veins and you can't grow no hair. Oh, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Why would you do that? What's the value? Like, what's the value in that? What is your payoff in that? The payoff in that is you can benefit from the system of colorism. You know that based on the system of colorism, you can position yourself above actual black women by claiming to be black when you're clearly not. That is colorism. That is a form of white supremacy racism. And there's no way of getting around that. Think about it. The exact same people who have made it their business so much so that they were trying to gatekeep the term biracial from an actual biracial girl, Katie Bolch, because her skin was a little too tan. These same people who have an issue with blackness will fight you tooth and nail to be considered black. Historically, they've not been okay with being black. But especially now, ask yourselves, sisters, why now? Why now is everyone and a mama fighting us tooth and nail to be called black? When I remember being a young girl and I'm not black, I'm mixed. All of a sudden now, have y'all not noticed the, the narrative flip? Oh, I'm not mixed. I'm black. Stop calling me mixed. Don't call me biracial. I'm black. Why? Because black is trendy now. The minute black women fell in love with their complexions, the minute black women stopped thinking that their own image was some sort of blasphemy or ugly, the minute black women started falling in love with their melanin, the minute black women said that my nine ether hair is beautiful, the kinky, coily, crown that God gave you is beautiful. The minute black women fell in love with their own complexion, the minute it became a super secret celestial sisterhood organization from, from the heavens to be a black woman. And now everybody wants to be a black woman. These same people 
who would tell you in the 70s and 80s, I'm not black, I'm mixed. Now they will fight you tooth and nail and rip your throat out if you don't call, if you don't agree, if you don't acquiesce to bestow your blackness on them. You're not black. And not only is Robert not black, Robert is not uncomfortable talking about race because we just listened to the evidence of it. We just heard the evidence. She's not uncomfortable talking about race, colorism. She's not uncomfortable at all. She fully understands that people have different experiences based on how they show up in the world. And I'm going to get off that soapbox. I'm going to leave it alone. But see, that's the point, Callie, that everyone wants to benefit from blackness while simultaneously making sure that black women don't. They want to benefit from your blackness while making sure that you don't. Just, you know, clock that. Clock that. That's all I'm saying. Always catch. Always catch. Because people like to play in your face. And they can't do that when you're aware of what's going on. Now, I want to share the screen, but I'm kind of afraid. Because, see, there's someone else who doesn't like black women who's in a little bit of hot water right now. Some folks by the name of Fresh and Fit. Y'all heard about them and what they got going on. Y'all heard about it? I'm tickled. I am tickled. Y'all want me to sh try to share the screen because I kind of want y'all to see it. Oh. <laughs> I want to show it. I do. I do, I do, I do. Y'all tell me if I can. Y'all tell me if I can now. You say try it. Child, they still had a little podcast situation going on. Mm -mm. Yes, girl. Yeah, the frog, the one that looked like a frog, done got that girl pregnant. Yeah, they they they, they said night riders. They said they not down with brown, all type of stuff, child. They got some stuff going on. Y'all want to talk about it? I want to show it. I do. Kelly say both of my grandmamas are high yellow and they went out of their way to have children with very black men. My grandmother said that she's a girl confused. Right. I can dig it. I can dig it. You say go for it. Y'all say trade. Uh-huh. Ooh. I'm glad she keeping it too, child. Okay. Destiny say what, girl? Y'all know. You know your sister gonna find the gossip. Child, this thing tickled me so bad we got to talk about it because I can't let it go. I, I can't let go. Call me Anthony Hamilton, honey. I can't let go. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Oh. My sis. God's anointed daughter sent me a cash up. You know what? That's my first support of the whole day. Thank you, sis. I sent a heart back. Let me show y'all my flower. My sister sent me a flower. Thank you. Oh, is can y'all see it? Wait. I got a flower. Oh, thank you, sis. That means a lot. Okay. So look, let me pull this thing up. Mm-hmm. Baby, baby, baby. Here you go. I'm just making sure I'm going to the right page, y'all. Mm. <laughs> this is funny. Y'all, this is funny. This is funny. Oh, when I say... Now, you know, we talked about these guys before, you know, they got their YouTube channel snatched and they was crying about the money and 
everything and the guy the the, the um the one that calls himself i don't know which is which whether they're which one is fresh which one supposed to be fit the um the little arab looking young man amru Fudel is his name i think he calls himself myron but his name is amru Fudel. Honey, he met Amru mad again. Remember when they lost their YouTube channel? He was the one crying and had on them booty shorts, them Daisy Dukes. Thank you for being 160 Ray Ray. Hey, Diva 2. Mm hmm. Okay. So, um, listen. Listen. That was Queena. I'm thinking God's anointed out. That was Queena sent me the cash app. Thank you, sis. My bad, Queena. I'm sorry. Because your name is different on the cash app. I'm sorry. I love you. Thank you. That's my only support of the day. So you know I love you for it. I be just running my mouth, running out of air. And, and when I get some love back, it means a lot. Let me share this screen. Let me share the screen, child. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all got to see this. Oh, honey. Turn your sound up, child. <laughs> Turn your sound up. The, the, the storm then passed over. So we got signal now. We should be good. <laughs> okay, here we go, y'all. Wait, wait, wait. I want to start with... Wait, this ain't the right one. I want to start with the girl. Y'all, give me a second. Let me get the girl. Because the recording from the girl is everything, baby. It is everything, honey. Myron, um, his name ain't Myron. He called himself Myron. But Amru is real mad because his his friend got a baby mama. And apparently, he didn't want his, his man to have no baby mama. So now, y'all, look. This is the girl in question. This is the girl in question. Now he moved to, he moved his girl here from China, all the way from China. Okay. Now this the picture of him with her and the mama. So if the girl is supposed to be a sex worker, how is she taking pictures with you and your mama? Why would you bring, you know, rent a booty from China and take a picture with your mama? Ain't you scared something was gonna get on your mama? Okay. And his mama's a lovely, beautiful dark lady. She's just as cute with her little self, and her son is a real piece of trash. But okay. Now, listen, y'all. Let's see if we can get the girl. Here she go. I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. No. No. I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you for the doctor and then you're good. I am pregnant. I can't pretend like nothing happened. I can't. In my religion, we don't kill. You're not killing. Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay. Well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. You know? Okay. So what you gonna do? And what you gonna do to me? Nothing. Well, why would I do anything to you? Nothing. Why did I do anything to you? No, I want the baby because I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. Okay, so you hear her talking to him like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping the baby. He telling her he don't want no baby. But the problem is, if you didn't want no baby, you too old, young man. You supposed to know what not to do if you don't want no baby. The first thing what not to do is don't go putting your little Johnson, your little Tallywhacker in no woman. If you know you don't want no baby, okay? But wait, there's Mo. There's Mo, honey. Amru is mad. His little, his little Arab friend is angry, baby. Him is mad. Him is mad. Let's get the first one. Let's go. Your podcast. Learn this. We've been through hell together. We had people come at us. We've had death threats at us. People are fucking laugh at every time we fucking go through some bullshit. People make allegations on us. People have tried to absolutely fucking destroy us. You know who was around me the whole fucking time? These fucking guys. So you motherfuckers can say whatever the fuck you want to say. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand by the guys that stand by me. Because you fucking pieces of shit. If there's anything you guys can learn from this fucking podcast, learn this. 
<laughs> so you see, he out of breath, child. He breathing hard. He act like this black boy is his baby daddy. Is this your man? Is him your man? Wait now. Let's go to the next one. Y'all ain't ready for the next one. Let's go. Could have been done behind closed doors. Y'all could have handled this like adults, but you wanted to run to the internet and illegally record him. You committed another felony, by the way. Okay. And and you best believe I'm calling immigration on you. <laughs> 100%. You, sh you shouldn't even be here. You're in the United States committing crimes, and you committed crimes back in China as well. And we have proof of that. You are a fucking sexual. Ooh. You shouldn't even be here. Ooh. You fucked up. You played yourself. You wanted the clout, now you're going to get the clout. I'm going to make you famous. Ooh. You thought that this was a fucking game. And that's irrefutable proof of everything I got. And I got more too. I'm not showing it all for obvious reasons. But the truth is the truth, and it's come out. Now, Jen Chen, you are not credible. This could have been done. So wait Michael. a minute. So now her womb is credible. They go, my girl Cynthia G. How is her womb not credible? Baby, the, the baby is in the womb. Ain't no oh, it's not credible. Oh, it's credible. Her womb is credible. Her womb is very credible. You alive, her womb ain't credible. It's a baby in it. <laughs> Then he said, hold on, y'all. Let's talk about everything that Amru said, child. Amru is mad. He madder than the man that got the woman pregnant. How you madder than the man that did the skeet shooting? Now you, why you so mad, Amru? Amru. <laughs> All that cussing. Y'all forgive the cursing because y'all know I don't normally let stuff ride like that, but he, he did plenty of cussing. Yes, why so emotional? Baby, he is beside himself. Now, listen. He said that she is a sex worker. I say, um, and, and 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 why was your friend sleeping with a sex worker? He say, <laughs> he say, you not supposed, to, you ain't even supposed to be here. Well, your friend, the one brought her here. Your friend brought her here. He say he gonna call immigration. I say we got people at the border letting them in. They can attack national guardsmen and everything and don't even go to jail. They was released on their own recognizance. So you calling immigration gonna do what? Right now the U.S. is letting them people squat in people's houses that they own and you can't even put them out. They arrested a lady for changing locks on her own goddamn property. So what you think gonna happen by you calling immigration? What gonna happen? Then he say that she broke the law. It was a felony recording. What state was they in? Because every state ain't a two-party state. So what state are they in? If it's a one-party state, if even one of them is in a one-party state or whatever, I mean, how she committed a felony? What you mad about? It could have been handled behind closed doors. Well, the behind closed doors, he trying to force her to take a pill. You just take a pill and then it's, you're good. She said, no, I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill him. I don't want to kill any, any anybody. I don't want to kill nobody. Mm -hmm. And then she said, what you going to do to me? Hey, yes, the partner brought her here. Now you're going to call immigration. You're going to call immigration. Queen will say he is, is he peen controlling child? I don't know, but he should have been trying to control his friend peen. He going to involve immigration, honey. Immigration is who he's calling. Tequila Brown, yes, girl, you caught us in here again. I was tickled. I say not Amru. Amru on here cussing, screaming, foaming at the mouth. I seen a little slob at the corner of his mouth. He breathing heavy, bamming on the desk, calling people Fs and all them names and cussing and going on. Sharon said, y'all know Amru got special friends. Mm-hmm. He, he, L, E, L said, what you calling immigration for the baby? The baby is a citizen. Right. Once she had that baby, that's a wrap. That's a wrap, baby. Cream of Wheat said, you mean it ain't panning out with his preference? Mm -mm, nope, because he said he don't want a baby, but he did everything to get one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brian say, his friend is just as guilty as she is. He was using the services. Thank you. Plus, Amru, are you a citizen? 
Amber, Amber, we don't need to see your green card, honey. We need to see your green card. Are you a, are you a citizen? And for that matter, the other one, the frog, he don't look like he was born here either. Can let me? We need to see y'all papers. Sit y'all want to check little Jen papers. Let's check y'all papers because I don't think neither one of y'all was born here. Kelly says she got an anchor baby. Show sure do. He can't convince her to do anything for all the gold in Fort Knox. That girl say, listen, <laughs> I'm not going back to China. I'm not going to be over there in the communist country where I can't do what I want to do. No, I'm not. That's what she said. She said, nope. My sister on the phone said he might want to call Gerber. Immigration can't help him now get that Gerber life grow up plan. Yeah, I agree. Y'all hit the button. I hit the button. Belize and JB, hey, thank you for being 166. Koku said she sounded like she was about to bust out laughing. Yes, she said, I'm, I'm, I want to keep the baby. There you go. Hey, I'm that girl. What's up, sis? Yes. And, and here's the here's the punchline. Because she don't mind messing with, you know, people who look like that frog looking man. I'm sure another Negro will be happy to grab her and make her a baby mama. She might end up on a rap album and everything. All her dreams can come true. <laughs> Cecilia said all she needs is DNA, baby. Even if she don't get, yeah, if she do a DNA test, she got him on child support and all that there. But she got that baby. They ain't finna put her out of here. She's straight now. Jen, welcome to America, girl. I'm that girl. Is Thank you for being like number 167. Thank, welcome to America, girl. Welcome to America, honey. You got it. You got it. You got it. So, yes, so that happened. I thought that was lovely. Um, any other honorable mentions before we go? Chad Ochocinco attended his first probate to watch his baby girl cross the burning sands, and she is now one of the first and finest. She's now an Alpha Kappa Alpha. So we're very proud for Chad's little girl. And I, it was it was interesting and sweet to see him, like, tearing up and mentioning the fact that you know he really did not he didn't he didn't get to attend an HBCU, and of course he's not D nine, but this was his first probate, and he was just talking about the wonderful feelings and um, how wonderful, how magical, how powerful that moment was for him to watch his baby cross. And I said, "Oh, that's so sweet." And he was about to cry and everything. He had to put his glasses on to try to had it but yeah she crossed over at prayer review so i thought that was a cute very cute honorable mention so i was really excited for him and his little girl she looked adorable by the way um don staley the coach over at south carolina the game the game cox coach um she's getting her flowers really proud for her really excited for don or as they say, Louis Vuitton Dawn, because she be, you know, Louis down to the sneakers. Max said, yep, girlfriend got herself an anchor, baby. Ain't no way she getting rid of it. Yeah, why would she do that? That's her ticket. That's her ticket to ride. And I wish her the best. I wish I knew her personally. I would send her a pack of Pampers or one of them Pamper cakes. You know how you make the diaper cakes? And somebody, you know, get her info or find out how we can send her nice things if she has a p.o box i don't know if she has a fan page but if she does and y'all find it let me know and the royal family will absolutely send her a diaper cake and some onesies for her little bundle of joy mm -hmm. a little anchor all right so listen i think that's all i got by way of news for today all the gossip we got for today so i'm gonna hop up out of here because I don't think y'all got nothing on it. But if you did, I was going to let you come on in. However, however, in the meanwhile, Lord, my sister say Janet can go get Jeezy. Yeah, she can go get Jeezy because Jen and my gone. Yeah, Jen can go get Jeezy. Mm-hmm. He likes them. Yes. So see, it works out great for everybody. So listen, y'all, I'm going to get up out of here. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit playing and cutting up with y'all um, for today. I enjoyed everybody. This was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, if any other gossip happens, if the gossip permits, we'll come back tonight. If not, we will be back tomorrow. You know what time it is, so you know what I'm going to say to you. If you did not hit the like button on the way in, please, please, please make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Make sure that you hit your notification button and click all so you will know every time we go live on this good channel. Please 
make sure that you subscribe if you've not subscribed because we are happy to have you here as always please know that you are welcome if you want to join channel membership there's a join button beneath the video and a membership link in the description box also in the description box we have the link for our royal family merchandise store we do i bet you we do and there we have crown gear for our royal family members even if you're not an official family member but you want to rock the crown we got the classic black and gold design and our new emerald crown design we also have the link for our amazon storefront so we can all shop together for our various homes and i have my amazon wish list with pens notebooks and snacks in case you want to help a girl out okay so in the meanwhile i will talk to you guys again soon I appreciate everybody for being here. Y'all have been fun as per normal. And remember, in case no one else says it to you today, God loves you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right? So I'll talk to y'all again soon, okay? Bye.